The next item that we're going to create is a kill pitch bin switch, which allows us to eliminate pitch bin from the signal path while maintaining it, say, for others. So, obviously, pitch bin. It's using the pitch bin plates on the back of my Ewe. Now, there may be times that you want to kill pitch bin for a certain patch. So, the easiest way to accomplish this is to, again, duplicate our macro that we, create, that we just created. Hold down your Option key, drag it away, and we get a new copy of that. And I'm just going to kill the connection for a second. I'm going to drag it open a little bit. And I'm going to double click inside my macro, and I'm going to unpack it. So just as we change the transformer from filtering out volume to mapping volume to modulation, here, we're going to set this again as a filter. So we're going to say filter matching events. We're going to change our conditions back to all under data byte 1, but we're going to change the status instead of control to right here. It says pitch bend. And that's all there is to it. So now, any incoming signal into this macro when it's activated, when it's turned on, will filter out pitch bend. I'm going to rename my transformer. Kill PB for kill pitch bend. And so now, if I take my output, and I go into my macro in, I take my output, and I go into my macro out, and I go into my object. So right now, pitch bin is still enabled. If I turn it on, it has no effect. So now I've effectively stripped the MIDI signal of pitch bend. So we're going to take this object and we're going to pack it. Whoops. Undo. Command Z is always your best friend. Anytime you do something that you're not expecting, Command Z for undo. I find myself using it a lot. And that has changed that. So I'm going to reconnect it. Okay. Uh, new macro and I'm going to close this up a little bit so I can grab it and now I'm going to rename it kill pp and now let's put it in line with the rest of our macros and there we go. So now I have the beginnings of a series of objects that can affect a combination of different things for a single sound source. I can kill the volume. I can remap that volume to modulation. I can choose to let pitch bend through. Or I can choose to kill it. I wanted to demonstrate a little bit how the kill pitch bend switch can be a fun tool. So what I've done is I've duplicated my three objects. I just selected them, held down my Option key, and I dragged them, and I got a new set leading to the same place that the old set was. However, I've already done that, so I'm going to get rid of these. So what I've done is I've taken my sum of my input, which is the complete MIDI signal coming through my interface, I've sent it into an ornament object, which I've in named split. Therefore, the single incoming MIDI path is now split out of the top and second outputs, one going to this series of switches and the other going to this series of switches. 
I've filtered out volume. I've killed the volume on that. But in the first one, I've left the pitch pin active. And in the second one, I have turned it off. Now, what that is the equivalent of is this. I'm going to deselect this, or I'm going to disconnect the second channel for a second. These outputs are leading to these objects over here, which are rewire instruments from Reason. And the sounds you're about to hear are from a fantastic refill set by Chris Volstadt at ewereasonsounds.com. These are the same instrument in Reason, just two different instances of it. They're both set to the same pitch pin value. We're going to get into uh, mapping things to Reason uh, coming up in a future tutorial, how to use Reason with Logic as a sound source. So in this case, this is what the sound sounds like. So when guitar players play solos, they like to bend, they like to play double stops and bend the second string. So by setting this up in the way that we have, going to two different similar sound sources, having one react to pitch bend and the other one not, you can emulate that effect of playing a double stop. But when you apply pitch bend, what you're going to hear, one of them will bend, the other one will not. And this is what that sounds like. And there you have one use of the kill pitch pin switch. Tune in next week. We're going to be talking more about building objects. Next week, we're going to start building more complicated widgets using faders to control other faders or faders to control uh, the parameters of our uh, transformer object. Until then, have a wonderful week. This is John from eulogic.com. We'll see you next week.